Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands, and this of course is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we're gonna do more stuff for TikTok? I mean, even I as a new TikTok user don't understand what's actually done in camera versus what's done in After Effects or some other editing program. I am very intrigued. So one of you, somebody out there, asked me to make a Josh VFX tutorial from TikTok, and I am super stoked about that because he was one of the first people I found on TikTok that I was like, oh, TikTok's not just dumb, stupid people dancing in their bathroom. He happens to be a really good dancer and really good at After Effects, so I figured this would be a nice marriage of things. I can't dance, but the After Effects part would be a nice thing to share with you guys. So without further ado, this is what we're going to be making today. My very poor dancing skills aside, this is actually gonna be a very fun tutorial. We're gonna do a traditional tutorial format today. I'm gonna to be walking you through in real time how to do this. This is a time consuming process, but if you follow all the steps and you do it to the best of your abilities, you're gonna come out with a really cool video at the end. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, I would like to announce the winners of the Celluloid LUT Pack Giveaway Contest. Your names are listed right here on the screen. I'm probably gonna butcher the names, but if you see your name here, congratulations, you have won the Cinematic LUT Pack and I will be reaching out to you through Instagram DMs to give you all the information that you need to get the LUT pack. So congratulations to you. And for those of you that didn't win, I apologize, but you'll have other opportunities in the future to win stuff. If you're subscribed to my channel and follow me on social media, we're doing a TikTok video today. Are you following me on TikTok? At Naughty and Sands. All right, we're gonna jump into it, but first we have to talk about how to shoot this video because it is kind of a little process. So you're gonna first set up your camera on a tripod and place it where you want to shoot your video. Now, no matter what camera you're using for this video, you need to make sure you have two things things, enough light, and the ability to put the camera into manual or locked focus. I'm going to be using an iPhone for this tutorial, so once I have my shot set up, I will press and hold on an area close to where I'll be dancing to ensure that my camera won't try and search for focus the entire time. Now, if you're not using an iPhone, just turn your camera on manual focus and make sure where you'll be dancing is in focus. You can turn up your aperture a little bit as well to give more room for your focus and compensate with your ISO to get some of the brightness back. Now that your camera is set up and won't try to auto focus, hit record and film a 10 second plate of the empty room. Next, walk into your scene and hit a few random poses that you'll want to lead into your video with. The last pose you hit will lead straight into your dance. So hit that pose, then break into your dance. Now I would recommend actually choreographing, choreog choreographing choreographing and dancing to the actual song that you will be using on TikTok. That way the whole editing process and everything will just sync up nicely and you won't have to worry about weird timing issues. So congratulations, you've shot your video. Your dance is probably way better than mine, but now get the footage from your phone or your camera onto your computer and we're gonna open up Adobe After Effects. I know I do a lot of stuff with my hands all the time. <sighs> open up After Effects, we're getting started. Okay, sweet. After Effects is open and I've got my video right here and the audio track that I wanna use. And those are the only two things we need to get started. First, take your video and drag it onto this little new composition button and it will start a composition the exact size and dimensions and frame rate of your video. I was using an iPhone 11 Pro to film this video. It is shot in 30 FPS at 1080 by 1920, which is vertical format. You just drag that right into that button, automatically creates the composition. Don't work harder, work smarter. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide our video up to the parts that we need. So the first one is the plate, which is the first 10 seconds of this video. Then I kind of walk out here and we're gonna hit my first pose, which is right there. Hit Shift Control D on your keyboard to split the layer in After Effects. And then we're gonna fast forward right to our second pose, which is this guy right here, boom. And our third pose right there looks nice. Shift Control D. And I am starting the song on my computer right here and then getting into my last pose. So right about here is where I actually start the dance itself. So I'm just gonna go back a couple frames by hitting control and the left arrow on the arrow key. And I'm going to pull the pose from right about there, shift control D to split the layer. Now that I have that done, I'm gonna come right over here to where all of my layer splits are and just right click on that guy and go to time freeze frame. And I'm going to create a freeze frame for every one of my poses. Pose three, looking good, and pose four. And what I'm gonna do is just duplicate this last one because we are gonna need the video continuation of it, but I am going to freeze frame the one underneath. All right, great, now that I have that, I'm going to drop the song onto my timeline. And a quick tip to find where in the song you were looking for is just click on your layer and hit LL on the keyboard, like LL Cool J, exactly, that's what I was thinking too. It kind of just helps you see where the song starts. So I know I have four poses, so I'm gonna to wanna to find four beats right before the drop. 
So right about there is four beats before the drop, shift control D, and I'm going to delete the first part of this song, zoom out, and then just throw this at the beginning of my composition. And then I'm gonna kind of work backwards. So right here is the drop. I'm gonna pull my video footage over of the drop where I actually start the dance. So now in theory, if I played this, it should match up. I'm gonna actually turn off the audio for all my other tracks so we don't get any competing audio here. I just wanna be able to hear the music. So now in theory, if I play this, it's actually syncing up quite nicely. So now we have the dance portion already figured out. The next thing we're gonna do is figure out all of our freeze frames. So I'm gonna take my first freeze frame and just drag it over right to the very beginning. So right where the, the audio track goes, meh. I'm gonna start it right there. And my next freeze frame will go here. This one will go here. And the last one. All right, so now I have all of my freeze frames coming in on the one, two, three, four beats of the song, and then it starts my dance. And basically what you're trying to do right here is just create some sort of like quick previs so you know that everything will actually be in time. So if I play this from the beginning, theoretically, it should all be in time. All right, that's looking really good. So then the next thing we're gonna do is actually cut out all of our freeze frames so that it will sit on top of our plate. And the reason that we recorded 10 seconds of plate here at the beginning is so that our freeze frames can actually go over the plate and it will look exactly the same as the actual video once we get started. So this is gonna be a very tedious process and very time consuming and I apologize in advance, but you're gonna wanna mask out every single one of these freeze frames. And the more detailed you are, the more accurate you are, the better this is ultimately gonna look. I, of course, am going to fast forward through this part so I don't have to bore you with masking stuff, but hey, you can watch it and fast forward. It's still as I, it's cool, I guess. It's kind of cool. I don't know. Okay, and we're done. That was exhausting. My finger is killing me, but in real time, you saw it sped up, but in real time, that took me about 10 minutes and I was being pretty lazy with it. But if you guys are a little bit more detailed, a little bit more refined, it will look good. But ultimately this is going on TikTok and everything else on TikTok kind of looks crappy. So if this looks crappy, so be it. It's part of the effect. You know what I'm saying? So now that we have all of these freeze frames done, uh, I want you guys to center the anchor point in all of your layers. My hotkey for this is Alt C. The default After Effects hotkey for this is Control Alt Home on your keyboard or you can click on your layer, come right up here to layer, transform, and go to center anchor point in layer content. But I do recommend setting a hotkey for that because it makes your life so much easier. Look, look, I'm already done. I'm already done. You didn't even notice. What's happening now is that all of these are going to click on and you see all of the different freeze frames on top of each other, but we're going to animate those right now. Click on your first freeze frame and go about halfway through in the layer. We're going to adjust this later, but I want you guys to set a position keyframe. Alt P is my hotkey. I believe control Alt P is the after effects default, but you're going to set a position keyframe and then you're going to move this into position right exactly where you want it. Now, I was a little bit off center doing the original poses, but I'm going to center myself up just like that. So that looks good for me. And then I'm going to go back to the beginning here and I'm going to shift, click and drag on this freeze frame and just push myself down below the line of the composition. Now I'm going to go to where my next layer starts and maybe go one, two, three, four keyframes past where my second layer starts and just copy and paste that first position keyframe right there. So now basically what we have is a very robotic looking animation that we're going to smooth out of this animate in. So in order to smooth this out, what I want you guys to do is right click on position and go to separate dimensions, then click off of the layer and unselect the X position because we are just working on the Y positional value, which is the vertical positional value. Highlight all of your keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease. And now come into your graph editor and we're just gonna smooth this thing out. And what we're looking for is a very deep U shape. So you're gonna click on your first keyframe and kind of pull this Bezier handle down a little bit about halfway, take this Bezier handle, hold shift and click and drag to the left, and then hold shift, click and drag to the right, and then take this guy and push it down. So we want a nice fat U, which is gonna happen really fast on the in, it's gonna hang around in the middle and then go fast on the exit. So I'm just gonna tweak this just a little bit. There you go. So now we're gonna repeat that process for all of the ones here. So we're gonna go right to the middle, roughly where you think the middle is, position keyframe, 
and you're gonna put that where you want it. So right about there looks good for me. You can also scale this up if you want. Uh, maybe we'll scale this one up just to give it a little bit more variety. That looks good. You on your keyboard to bring back your original keyframed properties. Let's go to the beginning and we are going to push this guy down underneath the frame. And then we're gonna go to our next layer. One, two, three, four keyframes. Copy and paste that keyframe there. Right click on position, separate dimensions. Turn off the X position, highlight your layers, F9 and graph editor. And now we're gonna make a U. I know that that's a very repetitive process, but that is how you do it. And we have a lot of layers that need the same love and affection as all of our other layers that come before it. So in this case, we need to just kind of repeat the process a little bit. You guys can come in here and you can do whatever you want. If you don't wanna do the deep U shape, if you wanna make these animate in uh, differently than just coming up from the bottom of the screen, you can do that. You can have them come in from the left or right, from the top, and they can drop downwards. Uh, but this is the way that I'm gonna show you today because this is the traditional kind of Josh VF tutorial look. And for our very last keyframe, uh, we're gonna make sure to not move the position because we are starting the dance from there. So we need that to be exact. So we're gonna come about halfway through. We're gonna set a position keyframe here, come back to the beginning, drag this down underneath. And then we're gonna go right to where our next layer starts, set a position keyframe there, and then come to our middle keyframe and have it overshoot and go up into the air. And then it will come down and settle, boom, and then it picks up the video from there. So while we're here, I'm actually going to trim all my layers back by hitting Alt and the right bracket on my keyboard, which will trim all of your layers back to almost exact. And then you kind of have to highlight these and then pull it back one additional frame. So now it is coming up from the bottom of the screen. It is hitting the top and then boom, it starts the video. That is looking good so far. Let's see what we have before we do anything else. Nice, I feel like this first initial keyframe is a little low. So I'm actually going to move this guy up a little bit to right about there. So now uh, at this point, you guys can turn on your motion blur for your layers if you'd like, which will give it a little bit of motion as it's coming up. You can see it's kind of like motion blurring in and then motion blurring out. So that'll just help it along quite nicely. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add all of our screen pumps because this looks kind of lame without the camera moving and doing cool stuff. So come up here to layer, new adjustment layer and drop an adjustment layer on the very top of your composition. And then we are going to come right up here to effects and presets, and we are going to type in transform and go ahead and drop a distort transform property right there on that guy. And then come right here to where the drop is. And we are going to instantly set a scale keyframe up here in the transform properties, then click on your layer and hit U so we can see all of our animated properties. Hit control and the left arrow key and go back one, two keyframes. We are going to set another scale keyframe there. And then from our drop keyframe, go over one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes and set another scale keyframe. Then we're gonna take our middle keyframe and bump this up to 150%. And now ladies and gentlemen, that is going to create the ever popular screen pump effect that all of you are always asking me about on Twitter and stuff, but we're gonna smooth it out just like this by highlighting the keyframes, hitting F9, of course, coming over to the graph editor. And of course, we're just gonna smooth this out a little bit. So this is gonna kind of instantly come up like this and it's gonna hang around just a bit at the top before returning to normal. That's a nice looking screen pump right there, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're gonna do is now copy and paste this set of keyframes to every single other kick on the timeline. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. You guys can adjust and make that middle keyframe kind of whatever you want. If you really wanna get fancy with it and you wanna go really super detailed on all of your keyframes, you'll take every second keyframe of the sequence. So this is your first, second, third, and then you'll alternate the values. So this one is 150, maybe this one would be 120, and then this one would be 170, and so on and so on. So then that way it will be non-uniform scale every time. For the sake of time in this tutorial, I'm not gonna do that, but that is something that you guys can do and experiment with. And while we're here setting scale keyframes, go all the way back to the beginning of your composition. And let's just crank this up to, I don't know, 235 or whatever number you guys want here. And then highlight these first two keyframes that you got. Come over to your graph editor and we're just gonna smooth this one out. And basically this is going to create that nice long zoom at the beginning of our video. Maybe we'll delay it a little bit at the beginning and do an S curve instead, a little S curve. Nice, that's looking really good. And last but not least on this adjustment layer, if you guys click on this and uncheck use composition shutter angle and then crank your shutter angle here up to, I like 160 to be honest. 
Uh, that will create a transform effect motion blur that is gonna be different than your composition motion blur. So you can get a little bit more aggressive with the motion blur. If you crank this all the way up to 300, it's just gonna be insane. I happen to like 160, it looks the best for me. So now we have an independent motion blur working on this adjustment layer that's just gonna look really nice. In addition to the scale keyframes on your adjustment layer, you can also add rotation keyframes so that over time your video is kind of rotating side to side. That will help give it some additional dynamic range with the animation so then it looks a little bit more impressive. But for this video, I'm not gonna do that, but all you guys would do is just set rotation keyframes periodically throughout your adjustment layer and then just make the rotation kind of bounce back and forth like a pendulum. And the very, very last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some screen flashes. I know you guys love your screen flashes, so come up here to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and we're going to hit Alt and the left bracket, and then go over one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes, and then hit Alt, right bracket. We're basically going to match our scale keyframe animation right below this, and we're gonna come right over here to the front, and we're going to come up to Effects and Presets and type in Levels. And then we are going to drop a color correction levels right on that adjustment layer. And I'm going to set a keyframe for the histogram. Then I'm gonna click on my layer and hit U and come right over here to the end. And I'm going to set another keyframe for the histogram. Then come to my first keyframe and I'm actually going to pull this input white value down just a little bit so that it flashes. And of course, highlight your keyframes, F9 to easy ease. I'm not gonna mess around in the graph editor for that. But guys, what you're gonna do is just duplicate this layer over and over again and make it hit on every scale keyframe or every other scale keyframe, or really whenever you guys want to create nice little flash effects as these kick camera pumps are pumping. And guys, that is pretty much it. You can adjust these values in these adjustment layers. Instead of it being RGB, you can just do red, green, or blue values independently, and it'll give you little hits and pops of color all throughout your timeline. Now basically you can add any effect that you want to these adjustment layers. You can just do it on the one and the three so that it's not as aggressive with all of your screen pumps and you're just doing flashes every once in a while. The world is your oyster with this Josh VFX tutorial. You can do anything you want in After Effects, really. I mean, that's the truth. So from here, what I would recommend doing is exporting using Adobe Media Encoder. You can do it as an H.264 in vertical video format, then send it to yourself on your cell phone, upload it to TikTok and align the song in TikTok with where exactly you want the song to line up in your video and then publish it. Make sure you do your hashtags because TikTok's all about the hashtags and like coordinating all the, ha I, don't, I don't know. I'm a boomer, I think. I don't know, my age, am I a boomer? I'm 31, huh. Anyways, thank you very much for stopping by and watching today's tutorial. I really hope that you learned a valuable lesson today for all of your TikTok needs or After Effects needs or both. I'm not gonna do a recap. I'm exhausted, this was a long one, but hey, if you followed the tutorial up until this point, you've done something really cool and you should be proud of yourself. If you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here whenever I want on Learn How to Edit Stuff During Quarantine. There are no rules anymore. Make sure you subscribe, check out the last video, follow me on TikTok and social media at Naughty and Sands, and I will see you next time.